Good morning. Praise God. It's good to be here. Not just standing in this place, but inside of the prayer, the prayer house. I, had the, I have the pleasure of reading to you this morning from Psalm 124. This month it's been, we've had the summer, I think pastor called it the summer of Psalms. And I'm going to touch on Psalms 124 today. As he said, I'm James Beecham. Some call me James, some call me Mr. James. But I'm still James. I have nothing special. I am nobody special. But I'm here to tell you about somebody that's special. And that's Jesus Christ. In Psalm 124, it reads, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now let Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. Father, it is in you we live and have our being. And Lord, today may we give a presentation that touches somebody's heart. May we, dear Lord, open our ears and hear what is being said from Scripture. May we speak it that one might understand. May we, dear Lord, adhere to what you've said in your word and that we carry it on and not only carry it on, O oh Lord, but share it with others. Help us in our time of need that we, O oh God, might give you praise in all that we do. It is a blessing to be here among the saints. Thank you, Lord. Thank you is my prayer, my supplication. Amen. Psalms 124 is called one of the ascent psalms meaning the rising or the advancing or the getting better or the coming out, one of those psalms. And when we come out, what we must do is give God the praise. Give God his thanks that he deserves. All that he give us, we don't deserve, but what he's done, he deserves our thanks. Some call the psalm, the songs of appreciation, the songs of the community giving God thanks, the community, David, when he was praying with, and talking with God, he thanked him for all that he had done. And now the songwriter is getting hold of the community and says, now you thank God for what he's done. And we are the community. We are the community. Bethel Baptist is a community 
in itself. Now we have many communities, but all communities are not giving God the praise. But I'm glad I'm among a community that's praising God. Amen. 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 Glory to God. When I hear you say amen, then I know you're with me. <laughs> Glory to God. The Hebrew designation for Psalms is a word called Tehillim, meaning praise. We ought to praise him for everything that he's done. And not just for what he's done, but who he is. God is our defender. The Lord is our keeper. He is our waymaker. And he's our way out. For whatever we get into, he's our way out. The Lord is a defense for his people, keeper for his people, protector for his people. And I was going to ask one of the young folk to read that Romans 8 chapter, 31st verse. Who's got a Bible out? Anybody, any young folk got a Bible out? Nobody? Where? Right, here. right there? Got a Bible out. Read Romans 8 and 31. And read it. Excuse us. Can I help you? You got it? I should have prepared that before we started. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? And that's all it was. All I wanted him to read was who is for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? If you remember in Psalms 24, it says, God created everything. He says that all of the world belongs to him. Everything belongs to him. Everything inside the earth belongs to him. Everything. So if everything's belong to him, why am I afraid of mankind on anything? Because it all belongs to God. So God is my helper, my protector, and he watches after his people. Now, who are his people? Uh, those that believe. All of those that believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, they are his people. If you remember, and I want to take you way back, in Genesis Chapter 15, when God told Abraham, gave him instructions, and Abraham went with the instructions and did what God said do, God counted that as righteousness in Abraham. Is that not right? Counted as righteousness. So if we believe in Jesus Christ, we are the righteous. And the righteous will get the promises of God. No doubt we will get the promises of God. Taking you way back, let's go way back. When God said that to Abraham, he said that you are, we count that as righteous, righteousness to you. 
He's still saying it. Over 42 generations later, he's still saying it. If you believe in God, you are the righteous. If you believe in God, you are the righteous. 42, over 42 generations later, he's still saying it. And he hasn't stopped. So he is God all by himself. He has not changed. Not one bit. He has not changed anything he said, not changed anything he's going to do. He's waiting for a response from us. To everything that God said, we must respond. So it's time for us to start responding. Those of us who are not responding, it's time to respond to God. Every knee shall bow and every tongue must, okay? Every tongue must confess to God. It doesn't say to anybody, it says to God. So if you're on the plateau, you got to talk to God. If you're in the valley, you have to talk to God. Mountaintop, talk to God. There's nothing in between. It's, it's God. Psalms 124 causes us to go back. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, men would have rose up against us. Or rather, when they rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. In order to catch on to what that, what's coming out of that, we have to go back. We don't have to go far back. We can go back to six months, seven months ago, but I want to take you way back because that's already gone through. Take you way back to somewhere around Exodus, around chapter 10 in that area, when Joseph had already passed, and after he passed, the administration in Egypt changed. And when the administration in Egypt changed, Israel was not getting their fair share. We're talking about the Israelites. I could talk about the Bethlehemites, but I'm talking about the Israelites at this particular minute. Israelites were not getting their fair share. As a matter of fact, the Egyptian leaders had decided that Israel should serve the Egyptian community. The Israelite community is to serve the Egyptian community. For a long time they served and God looked down and saw that they weren't being treated fairly. Anybody remember that? He looked down and saw that they weren't being treated fairly. As a matter of fact, they were oppressed, and God saw that. He saw the oppression. He saw the slavery. He saw how his people were hurting. But God didn't do anything until they responded to his, his call. They cried out to God and said, we need you. And after they cried out to him, then he moved. But glory to God, there are some that just don't want to hear him. There are some today that just don't want to hear him. The new, am I losing anybody? The new administration said, Israel will serve. And if they don't serve, they will be punished. And even during their service, they were treated badly. Already serving, 
but being oppressed and treated badly. I'm taking you back there because the psalmist didn't write this yesterday. He wrote it way back when. And he's showing us that Israel and the things that are happening today, some of those things that are happening today happened then. As a matter of fact, the, the preacher says that there's nothing new under the sun. While they are being oppressed and they called on God and God found them a man somewhere along about the, oh, I guess somewhere in the 10th chapter there, he called on Moses. And when he called on Moses, even Moses started to give an excuse. What I'm saying to you is that sometimes we don't do exactly what God says when he wants us to do it, and we wind up losing because we don't do it right away. Moses went to Pharaoh, uh, the leader of the Egyptians, and said, my God has said that you should let his people go. Now, who did we say was his people? Those that believe, isn't it? Those that believe. They believe that God could do something about it. And that's why God moved on it, because they believed. And while he's moving on Pharaoh, He's having a little time moving on Moses, his messenger. Because Moses was one of those James Beecham, a procrastinator. We gotta, we gotta lose that spirit, procrastinating spirit. But as he's talking to Moses, urging him to speak to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh didn't want to hear it. As a matter of fact, pride swelled up in him and he said, who is this God that's supposed to be telling me what to do? How is your God telling me, this God, what to do? To let your people go. And he got even stronger with it. And as he swelled up inside, things start to happen. Now, I'm, if I'm walking too slow for you, throw your hand up in the air and tell me, move on. And if I'm walking too fast for you, then slow me down. But he asked or said to Pharaoh, let my people go. And Moses carried the message. And when he carried the message, Pharaoh became harder. But in that, to, to skip a little further, a little faster, Pharaoh endured 10 diseases or 10 pestilence because he was hard-headed or against God. If God be with us, who can be against us? Are we catching that now? If God be with us, who can be against us? He endured 10 pestilence because he was strong and proud. God hates the proud, is that not right? What's proud, he hates. Pride, he hates. And Lord, if somebody tell me that God hates pride, I'm in a hurry to get rid of it. I ought to be in a hurry to get rid of it. But he endured those 10 pestilence. And now God moves, okay. After enduring those 10 pestilence, God said, okay, this one ought to work because nobody wants to lose family. I'm sorry, nine pestilence. And then the 10th one was 
to get rid of the firstborn child in Egypt. The firstborn child would be even stillborn. So after getting all of those pestilence coming through, he decided to let them go. But now he's a proud man, so even after letting them go, he heard something. He heard that, or rather he thought he heard. I don't know if it really somebody told him or if he just, you know, sometimes we have that mind that says we want to do what we want to do no matter what and how it takes to do it. We do it. But Pharaoh now let them go and as they leave, he gets a new word and now he wants to go after them. And when he goes after them, I want to go back to 124 where it says, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over us, or over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our souls. But, blessed be the Lord who has not given us to, as prey to their teeth. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. As he chases after the Israelites, even after they've left, he chases them. And when he corners them, this is when God really shows his hand. Now, you might get by, but we don't get away. When we sin, we don't get away. We get by, but we don't get away. The reason the community is applauding in 124 and giving thanks to God in 124 is because now they see what God can really do. As Israel is chased and pushed in a corner, the only thing, the only way out is through the garrison or through the water. That was the only ways out, through the garrison which is the chariots, the horses, the soldiers, and the water. The only way out. But according to my Bible, God gives us a way out. Sometimes we feel trapped by the overwhelming odds that come up against us. But with God, there's always a way out. There's no problem beyond his ability to solve. No circumstance that is too difficult for him. We can count or turn to God and count on him, the creator, giving us a way out. as they're backed up against the water. Now, you know the story. That as they're backed up against the waters, he spoke to Moses with that same stick he started out with and said, wave it across the water. And he parted the, parted the sea that the Israelites can go free through the water. Water heaped up to the side. There, there's a psalm that connects with that water heaped up to the side and they went through on dry land do we all know the story they went through on dry land and as they cross over and look back now we won't go any further than that with the Israelites because 
You know the story, they got out there in the wilderness and started acting up again. But God was on their side. And the chariots and the horses and the soldiers were engulfed by the water. Because all Moses had to do was throw out his wand and things happened. So be careful entertaining people because the scripture says you entertain angels unaware. Be soft with your words, as James can say, be slow to speak, quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger because that anger might be a backlash unto you. The Lord our keeper, we are his people, and we have the right to call on him any time, and all the time. He's, he's a God that never sleeps. He never sleeps. So he knows when his people are calling. So let us call on him. I don't want to bore you too much, but so I'm going to ask you to listen. If you're not in Christ today, if you're not in Christ today, I want to read the song that helps you. Psalms, Psalms 51 reads, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to your multitude of tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and I, my sins is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That you may be found just when you speak, blameless when you judge, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in my sin my mother conceived me. Behold the desired truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part you make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear joy and gladness, that the bones you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and uphold me in your generous spirit or by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. The God of my salvation and my tongue shall sing aloud of your righteousness. O Lord, Open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. For you do not desire sacrifice or else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. Do good in your good pleasure in Zion, to Zion. Build the walls of Jerusalem then you shall be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness. With burnt offering and whole offerings, then they shall offer bulls on the altar. But righteousness is what God is after. He's after the soul that lives in righteousness. The Lord is on our side. The Lord is on our sides. So let us respond to him in righteousness that we might show what side we're on. That's how we show what side we're on is by living 
in righteousness. So the community has to come together. We can't be a, well, let me say it this way. One man does not a community make. Is that said good enough? One man is not a community. He's got to share with others, interact with others, help others. Is that not right? One man does not a community make. And what I have, I need to share it. What I do, I must do it with my brother that he might be able to enjoy or enact or interact. There's nothing beyond God's ability. There's nothing that we can do that would stump God. He's already set us up. He's already, I think there's a scripture that tells us that he's already, he already knows the plans that he has for each one of us, not just all of us, but each one of us. He has a plan for us. And when that somebody starts to interfere with that plan, and it causes us to separate a little bit because now God wants us to carry out what he told us to carry out, whether somebody else is involved or not. But we still must have the community. It must be a communal thing. We must all do it together. I mentioned that one night, at Wednesday night, that a bottle of smoke is inside the bottle together. All that smoke is inside the bottle together. Nobody lets it out, they're still together. So let us stick together. Do that which is righteous, stay in God's sight. Don't try to find a way out. Don't look for a place to be when you already have a place to be. In Christ Jesus, there's already a place to be. Christ died for us. The question is asked, would you die for a friend? Not many people will answer that with a yes. But Christ did. So he did something that most won't do. And we ought to be thankful for it. Not just one or two, but all of us together need to learn how to praise God. Believe it or not, I would love to hear all of us praising God at the same time. Love to hear it, all of us praising God at the same time. And there's nothing to be afraid of. There's nothing to uh, keep us from doing it, is there? We don't live in Egypt. We live in America. And America should be shouting out to God every day, even if it takes all day. Now. Coming from me, it might not mean much. But eventually God will show you that it means much to give him the praise. Now, I read somewhere as a boy that God is a jealous God. Did anybody else read that? God is a jealous God. So what does men of jealousy do? They put a wall around what you can get from them so that you won't get it unless you talk to them or ask them kind enough. Is that not right? So let us give our all to God because he's given his all to us. He's gave us, he gave us his son, his only son, a sacrifice for our sin. So let us walk away from the sin that so easily beset us. Give it up and let God have it. He can take it and 
place it somewhere in the land of forgetfulness or in some place as we talk about outer space, wherever out of space, it won't be in your place anymore. I believe he said, those that are wicked shall make a place. And when they make that place, God will take that place and destroy it. And the place itself won't even remember that wicked person that was there. All right? I don't want to be that person that God discards. I want to be that person that he's calling. So let us all do that. Let us all get together. Call me on Monday and share what you have. Sunday, we're all right here. But Monday, we're not together. As a matter of fact, I'm afraid to get on Facebook. Facebook is dangerous. I know we all got Facebook. I'm not saying you can't have Facebook. I'm saying Facebook gets dangerous because a lot of controversy. Oh, no, 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 not just Facebook now. I'm just, I just named Facebook because it came to mind, but there are many things that we use and we use it against each other. We need to stop. Give God the praise and let him do what he will with that thing which is unrighteous. Is there anybody who doesn't know the Lord? Anybody that doesn't know the Lord that's sitting here this morning and doesn't know the Lord? If, you, if you're in here this morning and you don't know the Lord, call Brother Jared on Monday. He'll be there. He'll be out here at the church. So call him up. Let him know you don't know the Lord and that you need some, either some teaching, coaching, coercing, or that you want to be baptized. That you want to give yourself to the Lord and be baptized. Do that, all right, if you don't know the Lord. If you know the Lord, just call your neighbor and tell them about it. Call a friend. You can still call Brother Jared anyway and tell him how great you, how great you appreciate him. I think he'll be the only one in the office. Maybe Brother Benny might be there. So Brother Benny or Brother Jared, just call him up. All minds clear? Now we want to know, for real, the man say, for real though. Are all minds clear? All right. We don't want anybody to leave the building without knowing the Lord or at least knowing what they want from the Lord. If all minds are clear, nothing to be said. Nobody wants to come up and swear themselves in as a member of Bethel Baptist Church, become a covenant member. For those who are visiting, please come back. It won't be me standing up here to be one of the pastors. Please come back. Uh, for those of you who come all the time, Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here today. And right now, let us pray. And we'll release you. We won't hold you any longer.